and we're back. All right, so Mr. Robeson here, AP Statistics. All right, last video we went over how to get the T-stars, the critical values for the confidence intervals for means. And this one we're going to go over how to check all the conditions and actually perform the, the confidence interval for means. The state plan do conclude just like we did for proportions. All right, so our conditions are almost the same. In fact, they are the same conditions. They're just the middle one is checked differently. The normal one is different. So we also need a random sample. We always need a random sample to eliminate bias. That's usually the easy one. That's generally given to you. All right, we need a normal sampling distribution still for all this to work. And for that, we can have a couple of things. I actually left one of them off here, but we need our sample size to be greater than or equal to 30, in which case the CLT will imply that it's normal. Or if the sample size is less than 30, well, we have two options. Either it can already be normal. So another one I left off here is if the population is normal. That usually doesn't happen, but if that happens, then we're good. If the population is normal, then we're fine. Any sampling distribution will be normal. All right. If the sample is less than 30, we have to look at the graph. So we need to graph the data somehow. And we're just checking, is it not strongly skewed? And are there no outliers? That's what we're looking for. So we may want to do a box and whisker plot. We may want to do a dot plot. We may want to do a histogram. All right, you can do all these on your calculator. Most of the time on the AP exam, they'll give you a picture of the graph if there needs to be a graph. Well, maybe not most time, but some of the time they will give you the picture and they'll ask you from the picture. And in order to use our standard deviation formula, you know, the whole S sub X over the square root of N stuff, in order to use that, we have to have this independence condition that our sample is less than 10% of the population size. If it's actually bigger than 10%, there's another formula altogether to use, and we don't go over it in this class. All right, so let's just take a look at this here. So to determine the average amount of sleep students at a large high school get on school nights, 40 students are randomly selected to wear a sleep tracker, which will measure their sleep on a school night. Are the conditions met to create a 95% confidence interval for the mean sleep time of all students at the high school? So we want them to do a confidence interval for mean. So these are the conditions that we have to check over here. So condition one, do we have a random sample? All right, well, let's see. It says right here, random sample was selected. So random sample is stated. All right, it's stated in the problem. Two, do we have a normal sampling distribution? So let's see. Did they say, we don't know anything about our population. We almost never do. But we know our sample size is 40. So n equals 40, which is definitely bigger than 30. So the, by the central limit theorem, we have an approximately normal, and I do write it all out every time, sampling distribution. Right. So just say that, just please humor me, say that. And for the last one, n equals 40, is that less than 10% of, and now we now got to figure out what is our population. So to determine the average number of sleep of students at a large high school. All right, so this is the total number of students at a large high school. Does a large high school have more than 10 times that, more than 400 students? Probably. So more than 10% uh, is less than 10% of all students at this high school. And I usually just like to write, oh, it's gotta be more than 400. Yeah, that checks out. So all of our conditions here are met. That means we could do a confidence interval with a T distribution for these guys. All right, so again, dot plots are good graphs. Histograms are decent graphs. Stem and leaf plots, eh, they're okay. Uh, box and whisker plots are usually good because they show you outliers and this says no outliers and not strongly skewed. It doesn't really help you with skew though. So that's why I like dot plots because it can show you the skew. All right. So here's just three examples of checking just the normal condition. So only condition number two, the, the graph condition or the normal condition. So to estimate the average GPA of students at your school, you randomly select 50 students. Here's the histogram of their GPAs. All right. Well, the random condition is clearly met but we don't need to check that one. And we're looking at this distribution and it's got like some, some peaks and some valleys here. I mean, maybe trimodal, but I mean, it doesn't look strongly skewed. All right, the kicker here is, is we don't even care what the graph looks like. N equals 50, which is greater than 30. Central limit theorem tells us it's gonna be normal. 
So we don't even have to look at the graph for this one. Uh, so sometimes they'll give you a graph, you don't need it. All right, next one. All right, so we're looking at how much force to pull wood apart. The stem plot shows the force in pounds required to pull a piece of Douglas fir apart for each of 20 randomly selected pieces. So we get the random condition. Yeah. All right, so now we've got 20, it's less than 30. So we're not using the central limit theorem. That's not, so we gotta look at the graph. All right, and now we're looking, does it have outliers or is it strongly skewed? Well, it may have some outliers here. These are pretty far away. Like most of the data is right here. I, I haven't actually calculated what the quartiles are, but this is definitely skewed heavily. So this, I would say this is heavily skewed. All right, and since it's heavily skewed, I would say no, dude, does it meet that condition? Right, it's not gonna work for us because of the heavily skewed part. All right, we would need a bigger sample size than 20. All right, next one. Suppose you wanna estimate the mean SAT math score at a large high school. Here's a box plot of the students' math scores with a random sample of 20 students. So again, 20 is not big enough for the central limit theorem because we need 30. So 20 is less than 30. So we've got no CLT. All right, but if we look at the graph, it definitely has no outliers. And I mean, this side is a little longer than this side over here, but that, that's not really the end of the world. I mean, because again, this is all pretty evenly spaced out here. It just has a little extra over there. That's not, that's not a deal breaker. So we'll say it's not strongly skewed. Because remember, we were looking for strongly skewed. Therefore, the normal condition does work. All right, so when, when we say strongly skewed or outliers, we mean strongly skewed, like a lot of this data was off to the side up here for this one. All right, so here is our four-step process. Again, I suggest when you have any sort of confidence interval problem on your paper, you just draw a giant cross. And I usually fill in, I'll leave a little extra space for this side of the cross because this side has more of the work. But again, state, plan, do, conclude. And I spelled conclude right this time. All right. So we're going to state what our parameter stands for. We're going to be like mu is, and it's the, the population, the population mean, and then we have context. Identify the confidence level. We'd say C equals, all right, our bar kind of lost there, but we would list what we know. X bar equals S equals, we can say S of X if we want, and N equals, just list them there. So you're stating what you know, and that's all things you know. Plan. All right, so again, remember zap tax. So we're using Z when we're working with P, and we're using T when we're working with X bars. So we'd state the name. We're working with one sample, so we'd say one sample. We are working with T. We're finding an interval for mu. One sample, T interval for mu. We check our conditions, our random sample, our normal sampling distribution. And I remember to put the population normal one in here. So that's what we're checking there. And then our independence condition the less than 10%. And then we write our sentence. And the sentence will always be, we are blank percent confident that the interval from blank to blank captures the true mean blah, blah, blah. And it's basically whatever it is here. If you want to use the word population instead of true, that's perfectly fine. All right, so let's try. So a 2016 Pew Research Center study that interviewed a random sample of 350 American adults found that the average number of books read in a year by the members of its sample was 12, with a standard deviation of 10. Construct and interpret. All right, so construct means get to the do phrase. Interpret means conclude. Oh, I think I skipped the do over here. The do is just plugging it into T interval on your calculator. So again, yeah, we're using T, so it's T interval. Or you can do it by hand using the formula, but I suggest the T interval. All right, so 90%, 95% confidence interval for the mean. All right, so we're gonna state what mu is. So mu is the population or the true mean books read by American adults. in a year. 
All right, and this would be the year 2016, by the way, if we want. All right, then we're going to write down what we know. We know that our sample size is 350. We know that our X bar is 12. We know that our standard deviation for this sample was 10. And we know that our confidence level is 95%. You can also put percent if you want 95%, but don't put 0.95%. All right, plan. So we're going to state what we're going to do. And again, you can write the words state, plan, do, conclude. In fact, that is encouraged to write those words if you want to. All right, so the plan is we are working with a one sample. We're working with mean, so it's going to be a T interval for mean, mu. All right, do we have a random sample? I just bullet point these random sample. Hmm, I probably should have put the word, oh, there it is, random sample. There we go. So random sample is stated. All right, next, our sample size is 350. That is much greater than 30. So by the central limit theorem, we have an approximately normal sampling distribution. Right, back to chapter six. This is why we worked with sampling distributions. And then n equals 350. Is that less than 10% of all American adults? I hope so. So three, if we just do 10 times the 350, so as long as there are more than 3,500 American adults, we are good there. All of our conditions are met. The do, now I'm going to go to the calculator and I'm going to do a T interval on my calculator. There it is. Oops. Bring it back. On. It always turns off on the stat. Test. And number eight, T interval. And let's see. I still have the tomato data. So we've got a mean of 12, a standard deviation of 10. Our sample size is 350, and that's a pretty big sample size when we're working with means. And our confidence level is 95%. And we get, there it is. So 10.949, 10.95 if we want, or 10.949, and 13.051. There's our interval. All right, now if we want to write down anything else that they give us here, we can. But again, we don't. We've already written it all up here, so we're we're pretty good to go right there. All right, and now we can conclude. So our conclusion is, we are. We're always working together, so we're always we. We are ninety five percent confident that the interval. From, and now when we're working with mean, we do have units, so it'd be 10.949 books is what we're talking about, to 13.051 books captures the true mean books read by American adults in, uh, and let's see, it was for 2016, right? Basically, I'm just repeating what was written up here. All right, now we got another question that goes with this. So in 2011, they reported American adults read an average of 14 books in a year. Does our interval from A, so this is our interval from A, provide evidence that the 2016 data is different from 14 books? All right, what this is basically asking is, is 14 in this interval? No, it's not. So we do have evidence that it's different because 14 is not a plausible value. So 14 is not in the interval from 10.9499 to 13.051. So we have evidence of a different mean number of books read. All 
Mm -hmm. So we have evidence that is different because 14 is not a plausible value in that interval. If it was like 12.5, then we'd say, oh, well, it's plausible. If it was even 13, oh, that's still plausible. It's still in the interval. All right, so that's how we make the intervals. We'll, we'll come back and we'll practice one more with actual data on the next one.